Hello, everybody. I'm Ray Brazelton, your host of The Music Show. And I'm Nick Reed, a co-host. And today we have for you Renee Martin. And she's uh, been a real delight to have mm -hmm. on the show. Very, very uh, nice young right. lady. And mm -hmm. uh, has uh, actually a lot of uh, past uh, with uh, country artists from, uh, oh, I guess from... Who are some of the ones? Tim McGraw and right. of course Faith Hill Faith and all Hill, those guys. Right. She's been yeah. involved with all of them. She's been on a tour with them. She's been on TV with them. I guess she's been mm -hmm. on every TV show, uh, Letterman and uh, yeah. Leno, and every show you can think of. Uh, so she's yeah. uh, born she, and bred in Nashville. Bred in and Nashville, born, right? right. In, in and uh, so she's she's really got uh, a lot to offer for us to uh, to uh, accept <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to enjoy today. Right. Now uh, she's going to be doing more of a. Uh, I would call it a, a Christian uh, type right, songs. Right, and uh, in fact, we're going to be shooting her mostly on location. Yep, uh, we're going to be doing an awful lot of yeah, location. Now, this yeah. particular show here is uh, more uh, in the studio. Okay, but we do right. have some follow-up show coming material. up on location, right. yeah. uh, which uh, she does uh, maybe right. even There's a little bit of. A few churches she played while she was in the area. She right? was doing uh, well. We we set her up mm -hmm. for a few shows. Uh, her few churches, I don't want to call them shows, they were yeah. uh, concerts uh, uh -huh. for the churches. Yeah. And uh, one was uh, over at the, um, uh, I think it was the uh, Parenton Community Church. Right. I, was, and I was there that night. You were there that yeah. night. Yeah. And then uh, we had one over at uh, Seneca Falls, right. and, uh, that's uh, Finger Lakes Christian and then, Fellowship. And then one in Marion, right? In Marion, yeah. United uh, yeah. Church in Marion, and also I believe we had one in uh, Newark, mm -hmm. First right. Baptist. So uh, be, uh, just uh, basically, uh, you want to I see think, this show? Yeah, people will really enjoy it. Oh, beautiful yeah, voice. Beautiful voice and uh, a wonderful artist. Yeah. So stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. If today should be the day that I breathe my final breath, don't cry for me. When my race on earth is run and they lay me down to rest, don't cry for me. Cause a long, long time ago, I chose heaven as my goal. I let Jesus in my soul to set me free. So when it's all been said and done, I'll be living with God's Son. Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. Cause I'm in a better place. Don't cry. joy don't fear eternity put your faith in God above trust in Jesus and his love and you will see that there is hope beyond the grave and the joy of being saved is knowing he has won the victory I'm gonna leave this world of strife so celebrate my life, don't cry for me.
Hello everybody, I'm Ray Brazelton, your host for the music show, and this is our interview segment of the show with Renee Martin. Renee, so nice to see you again. Good to see and, you, uh, Ray. I just uh, guess you've all probably uh, enjoyed, I hope you've seen some of the, some of the show already, uh, and some of the concerts uh, that we've been doing. And uh, the concerts we've been doing were uh, are basically for the churches. Right. And uh, we've been uh, actually uh, featuring Renee. She's from Nashville, Tennessee, and she's uh, she's uh, really been around. You've really uh, been with a lot of different uh, famous artists, country artists, and uh, now uh, are in a kind of a ministry of your own. Uh, but uh, first of all, uh, maybe um, uh, you can tell us a little bit. I know uh, your dad was very instrumental in your life, and mm -hmm. uh, he actually was a co famous country uh guitarist and uh, did he sing? Uh, he did on occasion. This is Odell, your dad, Odell, Odell Martin. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was born and raised in Nashville. My parents were in country music. My grandparents were in country music. My dad probably did the most with it, but he was on the road for 30 years in country music mm. and backed all the greats of that mm. of the day, um, Jim Reeves and Patsy Cline yeah. and Dottie West and Farron Young, Kitty Wells, Queen uh -huh. of Country Music, and yeah. she's still touring, believe it or not. She's got to be pushing 90, and uh, she's been out there for 70 years yeah. on the road. Yeah. So you and got a few more years to go. Yeah, see? <laughs> a couple more, anyway. And uh, Farron Young, Mel Tillis, Donna Fargo, he was with all those artists in the height of their careers. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to follow in his footsteps and uh -huh. was able to realize my dream. And, I've and toured then you with, toured with a lot of them, right. too. In fact, he toured with Mel Tillis, right? Mel Tillis' and daughter. And I, now you're yeah, with yeah. His daughter. Right? Yeah, and Pam is a really good friend of mine and I'd met her when dad was with Mel Tillis in the 70s and she was kind of singing rock back then but yeah. then she became a country artist in the 90s okay. and uh, I've gotten to sing on the Grand Ole Opry with her and that was a dream come true to stand on that stage where Patsy Cline and Hank Williams stood and yeah. both at the Ryman Auditorium which was the original okay. venue and at the Opry House as we know it today. You, you actually these are a lot of your, these are a lot of your friends. Right. And you still keep contact with. Uh, but uh, again, now uh, you've uh, taken a turn uh, towards the ministry, right? And uh, this is what you've been uh, been watching and what you're uh, going to see more of. Uh, and I believe that uh, that you, you'll um, learn a lot about uh, how she goes about it. I think uh, you'll, it's not quite like being there. I know the difference. I've been yeah. there, and it is uh, when you're really there. It, it, you can see the little tiny. Uh, Tears come in sometimes from your eyes, I notice, <laughs> and uh, you're so sincere. It's one of the things my mother mentioned when she was there, oh. about the sincerity. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, I, I really do hope, everybody, uh, that you uh, enjoy the rest of the show. We also have an interesting showcase with uh, Renee, too. Uh, on what well, Can you tell us what that's going to be about? Uh, the, the showcase on how to become... What, how do you break into the business? Right. Is that, I get asked know? quite a bit yeah. about recording mm -hmm. on Music mm -hmm. Row. So we'll be talk about that yes. during the showcase. So how do you break into it? Right. So thank you, Renee, and yeah. uh, let's get on with the show, awesome. everybody. Thanks. You've been given all you got, but you're finding that it's not enough. Oh no, and you've been making it alone, but you found that lonely road is rough. Oh Lord, the strength to overcome is never up to you. Surrender your control and just see what God can do. Oh, His grace is sufficient. Yeah. 
your time of need. Oh yeah, whenever you are weak, His grace is sufficient. His power is strong, yeah, and you can carry on. His grace is sufficient. So just call on His name. You'll never be the same. His grace is sufficient. His power. Okay, welcome to the showcase segment of our show. And uh, of course, we have Renee Martin, our special guest today. Hello, Renee. Hello, Ray. And uh, we just came up with a thought that might be interesting for the showcase, so uh, we decided to put it on. And uh, uh, there have been um, questions uh, that people have uh, probably to you, and uh, not so much to me, but somebody who's made it, <laughs> like yourself, uh, about how do you break into the into the show business world and into the entertainment world. And we thought that this would be something that might be of interest to some of you out there uh, that may be interested in doing this. It, it, it's real simple, isn't it? Real easy. It really is. E e just no sweat. <laughs> no, you tell us about it. Well, sometimes I take for granted that I was born and raised in the town where my career was going to be, but most everyone that I know in the music industry has moved in from somewhere else. Very few people that are in the music business in Nashville are actually from Nashville including my best friend Lana. She moved from South Dakota, a little farm girl, and she made a big sacrifice just to pick up and leave her family. Mm -hmm. So um, I've learned the hard way how to save you a whole lot of time. If you've ever considered and you want to know if you've got what it takes to make it in music, uh, Nashville revolves around a song. It's all about a song. If you're not a songwriter, then I would probably encourage you just to do some demos and then send them in and try to get studio work or whatever and maybe pitch for a deal. But really, your best shot is American Idol or Nashville Star or some mm. kind of program like that if you're just wanting to sing. But if you're wanting to really get into the Nashville end of it, you want to be a songwriter and you want to move to Nashville first and foremost, and then you want to network at all of the hot spots around Nashville where they have writer's nights, and they have um, open mic nights, especially like on Sundays and Mondays on the slower nights of the week, and you can network with other writers, and you can do what we call writing up, where you write with someone who's just a little far, farther along the process than, process than you are. And that's kind of what I wish I would have started mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. When I first started singing, I just wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. And um, Billy Dean and Matresa Berg, some of the greatest writers in Nashville, told me, you need to write, you need to write. And I'm like, I'm a singer, but yeah. now I'm writing. And you're pretty glad you did. I just writing. wish I would have started at 17 right. because right. it is the way to um, get into it. But if you're interested in, in making it in Nashville, move to Nashville, go to the Bluebird Cafe, Douglas Corner, Third and Lindsley, all of the different writers' nights all over town. Start networking and meeting other songwriters. Schedule co-writing appointments and learn how to write songs and then get on the open mic nights. And if you've got what it takes, you're going to know it pretty quickly. Yeah, that's. Uh, we have a, a student uh, for, for, of mine that's uh, doing th that very thing. He knows what he's doing. And uh, he's out Derek? there. Derek yeah. Joseph. Oh, boy, he's going to love it. We've mentioned his name. Derek. Derek. Uh, so he's doing the same thing. And, yeah. uh, but he's got a song out uh, <clears throat> that is uh, uh, really on the charts and everything, Wonderful. too. So he's doing real well. But <clears throat> I guess um, there are other ways you can go about it, uh, yeah. too. Uh, but uh, can you mention any other ways? Or is that that's the best way? that you mentioned. That is the absolute, absolute best, way. best way, the way. Because to go about it. writing songs yep. lead to demos, leads right. to studio work and your voice being heard, right. leads to becoming a session singer, leads to a record deal. Okay. That's the way that it works. And I wish someone would have known that and told me, <laughs> you know. Do you find I've always thought that in the old days that you very often would get a a record company to actually pay for everything, but that's not usually the case, is it? Anymore, there are so many independent artists because right. of the internet. It's right. just wonderful um, to go that route. I'm an independent artist and I sell quite a few CDs right. online and you can, there are so many ways to market yourself online. But you have to finance yourself basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, or, or get a sponsor. In, in uh, right. Derek's case, he's got a, a person that's sponsoring him. Yes. Somebody has 
You know, Garth Brooks, I don't know that this is exact truth, but I'm pretty sure he marketed and paid for marketing his projects yeah, to um, no get the exposure like he did. Didn't the old days, so, uh, again, I'm naive about it. I, I don't know that much about it, but didn't the old days you very often a record company say, you're great, we want you, and pay for everything? Or was it just a, something I thought? Not, yeah. Was did, it that Did you see Coal Miner's Daughter or Sweet Dreams, uh, Loretta Lynn's yeah. and Patsy Cline's mm -hmm. stories? Mm -hmm. I think, I can't remember which one, but one of them just pulled, I think Dew took Loretta mm -hmm. to a radio station. Right. Walked right in, said, you got to listen to her. They put her on the radio, yep. and boom, they moved to Nashville. I don't know if it was quite that easy, but right. that definitely launched her career. It was a lot easier back then. That's what it's I thought. It's tough now. Yeah, you got a lot of competition today. So much. so much. And thank goodness, though, for shows like American Idol. They get a lot of flack in the music industry, and people mm -hmm. say, oh, you know, well, that's not really fair. But um, Carrie Underwood, I think, is one of the best things that's happened to country oh, music boy, yeah. in decades. Yeah. I love her. I predict she'll be the future queen of country music. And... Um, She's just phenomenal, and we would have never found her had it not yeah. been for American Auto, possibly. Yeah. Well, I, I guess uh, that uh, <clears throat> pretty much uh, gives you an idea what you can do to break into mm -hmm. the uh, country, uh, into the entertainment business, uh, at least as far as country is concerned. And uh, again, you have a, uh, a recording studio uh, yourself. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? I produce artists. Um, if you want to come to Nashville and record, get a hold of me. Just uh, You can go to ReneeMartinMusic.com and call me and we'll set up a session, a recording session, and we can do it several different ways. So there's a lot of different price increments, but on the average, it's about a thousand per song for a full production demo for mm -hmm. one song. Mm -hmm. um, if you really want to do make it special and have lots of really great background vocals and all that, it goes up from there. But you could record for as little as a thousand for one song, on up to twenty-five thousand for a whole independent project. And if you're not a writer, we will help find you the right songs, develop you as an artist, mm -hmm. and help you find out who you are musically, mm -hmm. and um, develop that. But I have a vocal studio in my home, and so I like to produce vocals because one thing that happens when people do come to Nashville is they don't have a vocal coach yes. who can get them to execute their best performance right. in the studio right. and it's intimidating your first time in a, in a recording studio and you're standing there you don't know how far to get from the mic right. how to use your voice and people get nervous mm. so they don't sing as well as they do in the car Absolutely. or the shower <laughs> well I can help them lose that inhibition yeah. and get that same performance that right. they can get when nobody's looking. And, and knowing you the way I do I think you do a very good job of that you're very personable with people and uh, that uh, so uh, again if um, if we could just uh, Maybe have your website again. ReneeMartinMusic.com. Okay, and that's where you go, and uh, she'll answer you. She'll she'll call you right back. Sure. She or, she or Cindy Morningstar, one of the two of them, will get back over you right away. And I have that second website, mm -hmm. ReneeMartin.org. Mm -hmm. So my email address is through that website, okay. Renee at ReneeMartin.org. But ReneeMartinMusic.com is a really fun, interactive mm -hmm. website, and that's where I want you to go and join, and so we can stay in touch. Yeah. We can communicate through that site. Well, I must thank you again for thank uh, you. another good segment, and uh, it is an interesting, a little bit uh, different segment than usual. Uh, but we, everything about the show is a little bit different than usual. Okay. That's <laughs> so this makes it sweet. Yeah. sweet. So we'll see you uh, real quick here. Take mm -hmm. care. Hello, welcome to Uncle Nick's Corner again. I'm Nick Rita co-host of the music show and uh, um, today I'd like to talk a little bit of, more about finger picking. Uh, I haven't done anything on finger picking in a while uh, when we first started. I did a couple sessions on finger picking. Uh, some of this may be a review but what I'd like to do besides just the uh, mechanics of finger picking I'd like to talk a little bit about the theory of chord construction and how we put things together. Um, using what we would call a 1-4-5 chord progression. Uh, we used to call that the hillbilly chord progression. Uh, uh, one, four, five, back to one. And it used a lot in country, but it's also used, if I put that 1-4-5 in a 12-bar blues, one, four, And then to a, that's just one, four, five in a different language. 
Uh, rock uses one, four, five. Um, actually, rock a lot of times has some more modal things, but that was one, four, five, two. What I'm going to do as far as the finger picking part of it, we're going to assign the thumb to the at one of the three bass notes. So let's take a G chord. <laughs> My old friend Marty used to call this a hog, hog calling key of G. I don't know why. He was a city boy, he didn't even know anything about hogs. But at any rate, we're going to play one of the three bass notes with the thumb, and then the index middle ring finger are going to play on the treble strings, the first three strings. And a simple uh, bass uh, pluck strum would go. We can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or we can break it up and go one, two, three, four, using alternate basses or with a fifth string instead. But notice what we're doing is we're developing kind of like a little bass line. You know, somebody said one time that uh, uh, guitarists are more fortunate than piano players because we have three hands. Now, how would that be? Well, uh, this hand, uh, the um, left hand, would be used to form your chords up here, obviously. But uh, the right hand, we could separate the thumb from the fingers, and the thumb is going to be used like a left hand on a keyboard, and the fingers are going to be used like the right hand. So we're playing a bass part here, and then the chords here. Now if I break that up, we can get a little fancier. Let's plug in a 1-4-5 progression in the key of G and see what we can come up with. I'm going to do one, uh, uh, one measure of G, one measure of C, one measure of D7, then back to G. So that's a 1, 4, and 5 in the key of G. Let's see what we come up with. Uh, and I'm just going to use a simple uh, strum where I'm using thumb, index, middle, ring to, ar to arpeggiate the chord. So here's what we get. works out really nice. That was in the key of G. I want to do the same thing in the key of D. Well, you know, something's going to change because the voicings, and the voicing is a word for the combination of the notes on the fingerboard for a particular chord. So the voicings are going to change. If I do it in the key of D, I'm going to use this D chord. Now, in this D chord, the root is on the fourth string. The alternate is on the fifth string and I don't have anything on the sixth string open, doesn't work. In order to cover that, we'd have to get an F sharp there, but we'll cover that in some other time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same progression, a one, four, five in the key of D, and uh, one measure of each. Uh, and it's going to sound a little different. G is the four in this case, and then A7, back to D. Do it again. D, G, A7. There you have the key of D. Well, let's say you wanted to play in the key of A. What would the three chords be there? We'd have an A as a number one, D as a number four, E7, as a number five. Let's go through that one. And it's and it's it's pretty interesting. Now listen, when we're playing these keys too, it would behoove you to I think goes that word again, behoove. I love that. But it would behoove you to learn uh, the keys because uh, in the key of D for instance, if I wanted to go from D to G, the one to the five, 
I could use a bass run, D, to the low E, G, or F sharp to G. So that's D. And if I didn't know that F was sharp in the key of C, I might play the F natural, but I, I know that F is sharp, so I need to play the F sharp. And then the A, B, and then C is also sharp in the key of D. So I had in the key of D. If I wanted to do something similar in the key of G, I'd have to go G, A, B, C. And if I wanted to go from a C to, to the D, I would use that chromatic tone. Then I'm on a D7, E, F sharp, G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. What we really look to do in this style of playing, of this folk style, is creating some kind of a counter melody in the bass with our thumb as we're picking notes in the chord. Uh, we could use all kinds of variations. We can use on the D, we can use that added G there, which is a G, D sus. D sustains, D suspended, and uh, um, resolving to the D. There on the G, I was adding a C. There I'm going to the A with a suspended with a D in there. So working together, notice how I worked a bass line in against a moving chord line up above. And as you look at these things and, and experiment with them, I think uh, they become a little clearer to you. Now let's say, for instance, uh, before we close, what if we wanted to play in the key of E-flat? Well, you know, I didn't bring my capo with me today, but that's a good candidate for a capo. In the uh, ensuing weeks here, sooner or later, I'll do a, a whole thing, maybe a couple things on the use of a capo. But if I, just as, as a brief introduction, if I'm playing in the key of D and I needed to play in the key of E-flat, I can place my capo on the first fret and play the D then it becomes an E flat. And I can play the chords that are in the key of D and they become the chords that are in the key of D flat. Voila, magic, it's almost like magic. But at any rate, uh, if you have any questions on any of the things we talk about here or any of the things that we do, or if you're interested in looking at a particular subject, guitar related subject, uh, I'm not afraid to uh, try anything uh, as far as uh, looking up things or trying to uh, find out something I don't know. Uh, so if you have any questions, any uh, concerns, any things that you want to know about this, feel free to write us. Uh, uh, the information will be on the screen shortly, or it has been before. So I encourage you uh, uh, to, uh, to write in, uh, email, or whatever. But until next time, uh, this is Uncle Nick uh, and saying, you know, keep playing, keep practicing. There are people in the world that are really hurting and we have the opportunity to help them. So let's go into all the world and tell them the good news. There are people walking wounded, imprisoned by their pain. Accustomed to indifference, not knowing who to blame. The victims don't cry out. Cause they're not sure how much we care 
It's up to us to show them, but do we want to go there? Let's go. Let's go. And let's give. Let's give. Let's heal. And let's live. Reach out and reach in. Doesn't that sound like? There's overwhelming evidence To just pretend that no one's hurting Would not make any sense And it'd be easier to stay here Cause we don't want to get involved But if we choose to make a difference These problems can't be solved Welcome everybody to the music show. I'm Ray Brazelton, your host. And I'm Nick Rita, co-host. Today we have for you Renee Martin from Nashville, Tennessee. She's uh, gracious with her presence and she's going to be doing a few shows around the area so we were able to get her onto the show. So I want to welcome you Renee Thank you, to the Ray. show and uh, we brought uh, our third co-host <laughs> Dick Rowland again uh, to uh, help us with uh, our interview. Uh, Dick knows Renee very well and knew uh, her father even better over years ago and he's the one actually responsible uh, for getting Renee to us and we appreciate that. And uh, Nick you're going to help me uh, with the uh, interview or uh, I'm just going to sit here and look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> As you always do, right? <laughs> but uh, I guess we'll start with our email. Mailbag. Uh, right? <laughs> thank you. Mailbag. Yeah. I, I yeah. Get it was email, email, though, wasn't it? It, it, it yeah. was an email, yes. Right. And it was from Joey, Joey, J-O-E-Y, I believe. And uh, I left it at home, but the, the oh, gist of it was uh, about the voice and wanting to know uh -huh. uh, how you take care of your voice, how you maintain it, and um, and uh, that was uh, basically the the email that we got for the mm -hmm. mail bag. And uh, so I thought I'd, uh, you know, it's uh, we got this quite a while ago, mm -hmm. uh, but I saved it for just the right person. Mm -hmm. right. And I thought this would be a good one for uh, Renee. Uh, if, if, and sometimes Nick and I are the ones that give the answers. But today, right. Renee, you sing out. Uh, Quite a bit, and uh, I sing out once in a while too. 
and so this is for me will be helpful to me too. How do you keep your voice uh, in condition for, uh, with uh, colds that come up on occasion? Mm -hmm. And in my case, I've had a hoarse throat. You can probably hear it a little bit for about three weeks, and I and I found out that I was probably eating too much dairy. <laughs> and uh, well, I'll let you explain. What what do you do to keep that voice? Clean? There are a few things. Number one, tons of sleep. Um, especially when I'm doing consecutive days back to back, I need a minimum of eight hours and yeah. sometimes 12, mm -hmm. just depending on how much I've strained it. Tons of water yeah. to hydrate and uh, stay away from caffeine. Mm -hmm. Caffeine dehydrates you. It's very hard on your voice and it also causes you to have to clear your throat all the time. Mm -hmm. So lots of sleep, lots of water, stay away from caffeine, mm -hmm. and then try to curb the dairy if you can. Mm -hmm. um, and then there, there are a lot of breathing exercises and things that you can do, but that's, that's the easy mm -hmm. part of it, is just mm -hmm. sleep and drink water. Y yes, uh, the easy part would be, like you said, probably a lot of um, uh, the, this exercise type thing, but trying to keep away from foods you like is mm, going to be the hardest tough. part. And the Chocolate. sleep, and getting the sleep with all the uh, mm -hmm. work you've got to do, uh, that's got to be tough. Mm -hmm. uh, there's old remedies that I'd heard, one of them being gargling with salt water. I don't even know if that's good I or not. I think it's great. It I is. I think it's great. And another one was, uh, and this is uh, maybe off the wall, but somebody said about something to do with the white of uh, the egg yolk. The white egg whites. I've heard that. You have. I have. And it, is that like raw, or is that cooked, or do not you know? sure? <laughs> I actually think it was your mother that may have brought it up. Yeah, it was before and, you heard um, it. That's where I heard it. It makes sense. You need the protein, mm -hmm. but maybe the white part of it is the safest and mm -hmm. healthiest part. Yeah. Well, I, I, I thought it was uh, kind of strange, but there are probably. Uh, do you know of any other uh, remedies like that? Anything? Well, uh, you honey and lemon. Okay. Herbal tea and honey and lemon. Try to drink room temperature water when you're performing, okay. not cold. cold. Every little thing helps, but the major thing is um, stay away from caffeine. I even may, I may move that up to first place. Caffeine will wreck your voice. And then sleep yeah, and then water. Sleep. Right. <laughs> They're all equal. Renee, how about as far as like in a remedial sense, if you like maybe sing a lot longer than you would have liked to and, and you mm -hmm. feel your voice getting a little ragged. Is there something that mm -hmm. you do in particular when you've maybe overused it? It really helps to take a few voice lessons, learn some breathing techniques mm -hmm. and some vocal warm-up exercises that can help you to sing more correctly so that you don't strain. We right. actually are harder on our voices when we're talking mm -hmm. because we don't speak correctly. When we sing, we're not as hard on our voices. Right. That's interesting but when I started out singing it was in smoky honky-tonks mm -hmm. thank goodness they've taken a lot of the smoke out of the establishment right. so um, but there are still many bars where people smoke but um, that was really hard when I first started out because I wasn't a smoker and right. the secondhand smoke was really tough but just tons of water go out and get in the fresh air um, there are a few exercises that I could show you maybe on the break <laughs> yeah and then maybe we could talk about them that would help yeah to clear out. But honey and lemon in hot tea mm -hmm. is very soothing when you're performing. Somebody said, you know, I heard of pepper in, in tea, had you? Pepper? Pepper? Yeah. I don't know what that is. But make sure that it's non-caffeine, you know, decaffeinated right. tea, that right. it's herbal tea. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that answers it, and that, that'll help you with your, no, you don't With my plan? <laughs> <laughs> you sing it a different way, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, a different way, right? Yeah. <laughs> Joy, we hope you uh, got a little bit out of that. I certainly did. And, uh, of course, if anybody's interested, see, you didn't have to say a thing to me. If anybody's interested in writing to the music show and giving uh, us questions that we can answer, our email is right there on the screen. See, it just flashed before you write now, right? I think. Mine's almost <laughs> see, like it's right there. It's almost like a magician, isn't it? It's amazing it's like, how that works. Uh, <laughs> I don't see nothing. Magical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, so getting uh, back to uh, the round table and our guest star today, uh, Renee Martin, uh, and the reason we're here today is, uh, and we thank you for coming on the show. We uh, have you at several churches in the area, in the Rochester area. You've got a lot of people that, that haven't really 
been introduced to some of the music that you do, worship music you do. Some of them maybe are in the old, old church music that we, yeah. a lot of us probably grew up with. Yeah. And um, it'll be a real challenge uh, to see some of the older people maybe come out and see this. But I know that there are a lot of young people. Thank you. See, I told you again. Yeah. Take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of young people that uh, this would affect. I would imagine teenagers. As a matter of fact, when we were over at Parenton Community Church, I watched uh, uh, mother and daughter there. And I kept on seeing the mother smiling, looking at her teenage daughter and smiling and while the teenage daughter was so engrossed in oh. your music. So you can see the effect you have. So you do this uh, all over the East Coast? All over the United States and beyond, oh. wherever God opens the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just never know how it's going to happen. I ran into Dick and Kathy in July at Odell Martin Day, mm -hmm. a day that where they pay tribute to my father. And then he knew you. And you guys brought me up here and just yeah. got you busy. Yeah. So we had a reunion that was like 30 years after the fact. Yeah. Yes. Haven't seen you in 30 yeah. years. Well, Dick, now that we're talking about the reunion, and you knew her as a little girl, but you knew her father first. You want to give us I a little did. background on Renee's father? Well, this we went to a Mel Tillis um, concert, and uh, Odell was his lead guitar player. And uh, our table was up towards the stage. And um, Odell and I started a conversation. Right That's not hard the show. to do with you, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was like uh, almost instant friends, you know. We had common interests. And, and um, so I said, geez, it would be nice if we uh, could get together and jam a little. He said, how about Sunday? <laughs> so that's... That's what happened. I picked him up at the uh, motel. Was there he was somebody there with, with him? At Mel the Tillis was yeah. there. And uh, he came out and he wanted to know where we were going. And Odell had his bag, you know, with his guitar in it. And, and we spent the afternoon watching the Super Bowl and playing guitar. And I got a call from him sometime later. And I said, where are you? And he said, I'm out at the Sheraton in Henrietta. He was uh, driving. <clears throat> Donna Fargo's bus. So I said, I'll be right out. So I picked him up and uh, brought him out to our house. He stayed overnight. <coughs> and then uh, the next day, he kept looking at his watch, you know, and I knew it was getting time to leave because they're ready to roll down the throughway, you know, so. Now, maybe give us um, a little bit of insight on. Odell's past, uh, and this is your dad, Odell Martin, very famous uh, man in his own right, uh, and, and, and more. Uh, many, many people knew who he was. He was known actually as, uh, didn't you say that a lot of people considered him one of the best guitarists in, oh, absolutely. in Nashville? He was, yeah. yeah. You, if you go to Kentucky, down to the Merle Travis Center, you'll find that out. Right. He's the only other person in the showcase there mm -hmm. besides, as it's mentioned, besides Merle and Chet. Mm -hmm. So Wow. I know he's played, uh, his family has played with uh, people like uh, Mel, Maybell Carter yeah. and uh, some of the great she, from the old His family. mother probably played a little bit like Maybell. Yeah. But she'd, Odell's mother. She'd do, uh, was it? Um, Spanish two-step or something, mm -hmm. da, 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 mm -hmm. da, But then Odell played it, da, 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 you know, Younger generation. Different. Yeah. 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 Uh, different style. Uh, but also he's played himself uh, out with, uh, your dad played mm -hmm. with some greats. Can you mention some of the people uh, that he actually backed up at the Grand Ole Didn't you say he played the first Grand Ole Opry country? He played um, the very first, first country music show at Carnegie Hall with Carnegie Jim Reeves. Hall. Sorry. And that was new to New York, sure, you know, sure. to have country music there. Yeah. But um, he started out as a teenager. When he was 17, he left Kentucky, drove about an hour and a half to two hours to Nashville yeah. to play the Grand Ole Opry with right. Jumpin' Bill Carlisle. Yeah. But he backed Patsy Cline and all the greats, Dottie mm. West. Um, I could go on and on, Jim Reeves. But he ended up touring with Farron Young, Kitty Wells, Donna Fargo, and Mel Tillis, but not all at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was uh, on the road for 30 years, mm -hmm. and um, he was my hero, and I wanted yeah. to be just like him. Oh, and, and you are following this footsteps. Actually, you 
also played with some great. In fact, didn't you play uh, or tour with uh, Pam Tillis? I the, did. Mel Tillis's daughter. I did. I've done the Grand Ole Opry with Pam Tillis, mm -hmm. and I've toured with Faith Hill mm -hmm. and Tim McGraw mm -hmm. and Patty Loveless mm -hmm. and Billy Dean mm -hmm. and several Jessica Andrews. But um, the height of my career was Tim and Faith. Yeah. Definitely it, working for Faith Hill was it for me. Am I mistaken, or are they married? They are married. Okay, that's right. Tim and Faith are just Ken and Barbie. They're yeah. the world's most perfect couple. Yeah. So you, you sat uh, next to them on bus, on bus rides, and yeah. so you, you really have a, a very good, you're friends with them, yes. basically. Yeah. Keep mm -hmm. that contact with them. Yeah, they stay really bit. busy. Yeah. I, I try to keep it to now, a minimum. You, you, I know that it is a very tough life. Uh, I can't imagine because I've never done anything like that. But, but I imagine after a while that will wear on you. And, uh, and I know that there was a story about uh, there was a kind of a time when uh, they were going on their own and you had to make a decision what you were going to do. Right. Now you can tell us what, what you did, what your decision was. Well, Faith had been touring pretty heavily up until 2001. And um, she was in the height of her career when this kiss crossed over and went pop. And she went from being just a country music Nashville artist to being a huge celebrity worldwide at that point. She became a cover girl and, and was on every television network, every major show that was on. So I got to be with her during that time. Um, and it was very, very exciting to watch her career grow to that point. And then she decided to take a few years off and be more hands-on at home as a mom. She didn't quit doing interviews and photo shoots and uh, other parts of her celebrity, but she quit touring with her band. Mm -hmm. So men, some of our band members went with Brooks and Dunn, mm -hmm. uh, one with Toby Keith and others with different artists. And so I was either going to go out on the road um, with Leanne Womack or Martina McBride or somebody, or it was time to go ahead and do what I knew that God had called me to do and that was to use the gift that he had given me to promote him and put him in the spotlight. This came to be uh, a lot because of your father's uh, death. Right. And um, it's quite uh, touching that you would, um, you, there was a gentleman after your dad died by the name of Lloyd Cook, mm -hmm. and he was a, a pastor, and somewhere or another uh, you met him, and he was responsible for, for your your life mm -hmm. uh, as it is now. Yes. Could, could you tell us a little bit about Loy and uh, just Yeah. In 1985, my dad was killed in a car wreck, and that whole next year I was 20. I was really contemplating life and death and heaven and what I believed about eternity and faith and all those things, and it was during that year of soul searching that Loy came into my life through. I was trying to get out of the nightlife and quit playing the bars, yeah. and um, so I was working a day job in sales, and we worked together. and. He would just talk about the Lord all the time, and it was going over my head in one ear and out the other. But somewhere along the way, he didn't give up on me. And three months later, uh, after he had taken me under his wing and loved me like a daughter and uh, helped to fill that void from the loss of my dad, he just kept inviting me to church relentlessly. We ought to come to church. You ought to come to church. And I thought, well, I've got to sing. I don't want to get up that early on Sunday morning. but. I finally gave in three months later. He didn't give up on me, and I got radically obnoxiously saved. <laughs> and I kind of calmed down since then. That's been a, right. you know over 20 years ago. Yeah. So I came back down to earth and yeah. reality. But um, and, and and now you are bringing uh, everything you learn about Jesus, about God, and you're bringing it in your <laughs> missionary work and, right. uh, in, into the public and doing all these different church uh, events. So you have uh, several things that you do. Um, this is, by the way, I don't know if you can get this or not, but it's a, a picture of Renee. I don't know if um, it's too glossy to get it. Hey, hey. There you go. That's me. That, that's, that's Renee. <laughs> and she uh, goes to, again, all over the East Coast. She's invited, like we invited her, visit to churches to do several different programs. And um, here's another picture. Mm -hmm. of Renee, and this is, you know, all that's on her website. This might be a good time to uh, mention, uh, you can go to her website. Uh, do you want to tell us your website? Uh, it's ReneeMartinMusic.com. Mm -hmm. I have another website, ReneeMartin.org, that I've had for about five years. But ReneeMartinMusic.com is new and improved and interactive. Great. So that's where I want to send everybody. 
If you want to uh, get a hold of her, I'm sure you can get a hold of her. She's very quick on the response, either her or Cindy, uh, call you right back immediately. Unbelievable uh, you, you know, concert. Renee, I have a quick question. Okay. What would you say to somebody who said, all this Jesus stuff is okay for you, but I don't buy it? Right. That's exactly what I said to Lloyd Cook. Uh -huh. My first experience with the church was when, when I was 12 years old. I wasn't raised in it. Mm -hmm. And I think that most of the people that are in church today have probably been raised in it and are familiar with it. But if you're like me and you're an outsider and you're not going to buy into it really quickly, um, the thing that I could not escape was the love oh, no. that Lloyd showed me. And what I had experienced in the past before that was religion and people saying, well, you've got to straighten up, you've got to get in church, you've got to dot the I's and cross the T's, score brownie points with God and earn your way to heaven and be good enough. And that is just... So you, don't, you don't have to earn your way to heaven? No, no, hmm. no. Jesus did for us what we can't, couldn't do. Now, grace doesn't give you a license to sin, well, but if you really right. understand what Christ has done for us, mm -hmm. then you don't want to live like that. So then it's an internal change. Right. Relationship over religion. It's a personal exactly. relationship. Right. Right. And Lloyd Cook was the first person that I ever saw Jesus living inside of him. I could mm -hmm. see that there was something different about his life. He had peace. Right. He had hope. And I was very you distraught could, over losing my dad. Yeah. And so I needed hope. Mm -hmm. I you could see it in the that. picture of him, uh, of Lloyd, yeah. that Jesus uh, seems radiated. to be right, radiated. Yeah, just him, radiated. You know. Thank you, thank you, uh, Renee, for being with us this week. Thank you. This has been a wonderful week with you, uh, exciting for us, and uh, and especially uh, meant a lot to me uh, because of what you've done uh, for me personally. So thank you, thank you again, uh, Dick. Again, thank you, my man. <laughs> my man, <laughs> thank you. He's the one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and thank Richard, you so much. Richard, nice me. to see you. Good to meet Dick, you. Dick. Dick. Appreciate it. It was great being with Nick, you. Nick, I just called you Dick. I'm sorry, Uncle Nick. <laughs> we will see you. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't pay much attention. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're done with this show, but uh, there's, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed the show today. And uh, we will see you at the next music show right here. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye. Time has come, but I'm not. shed a tear then let it be for joy don't fear eternity put your faith in God above trust in Jesus and his love and you will see that there is hope beyond the grave and the joy of being saved is knowing he has won the victory I'm gonna leave this world astride, so celebrate my life.